Hi, the question in this video is about binomial theorem. In part A of this question, write down and simplify in descending powers of x the first three terms in an expansion of open brackets x to the power of 5 plus 2 divided by x to the power of 6 close brackets to the power of n, where n is greater than 0. In part B of the same questions, when the third term of the expansion is divided by the second term, 8 divided by x to the power of 11 is obtained. You are to show that n is equal to 9. And in the final part of the same question, using the value of n found in previous part in part B, without expanding the binomial expansion, show that there is no constant term in this expansion. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. For part A of this question, we are told to write down and simplify the first three terms of this expansion, and in this expansion, we can tell that the power over here is an n, which is an unknown over here. So there are a couple of things we will need to go through. First, let us recap on our binomial theorem, whereby if we are to expand the a plus b to the power of n, the first term will give us a to the power of n, plus the second term shall give us n c1, a to the power of n minus 1, b to the power of 1, plus the third term shall give us n c2, a to the power of n minus 2, b to the power of 2 plus a triple dot over here implying that there is further terms behind. So over here, as you can see here, um, the, all the a's are being highlighted in blue. So the powers of a's are actually been reducing. So you have a to the power of n, a to the power of n minus 1, a to the power of n minus 2. And the powers of b's, so we start with b to the power of 0, which is a 1. So the power of b's are slowly increasing. So b to the power of 0, b to the power of 1, b to the power of 2, and so on. So the one that is highlighted in yellow is known as a binomial coefficient. So we have nc0, which is the same as 1, and we have nc1, nc2, and so on. So let us expand this part over here first. So to expand x to the power of 5 plus 2 over x to the power of 6, whole thing to the power of n. So x to the power of 5 is now your a. And 2 over x to the power of 6 is now your b. So expanding this part for the first three terms, we therefore have this. So your a to the power of n now is x to the power of 5, whole thing to the power of n. Second term shall give us n c1. So a to the power of n minus 1 shall now give us x to the power of 5, whole thing to the power of n minus 1, that is highlighted in blue. b to the power of 1 over here in green, now it's your 2 over x to the power of 6, whole thing to the power of 1. Plus your third term, n c2 a to the power of n minus 2, which is x to the power of 5, whole thing to the power of n minus 2, like this. And b to the power of 2, now it's going to be 2 over x to the power of 6, whole thing to the power of 2, plus triple dot, implying there is more terms behind. Now, as you can see here, we are stuck. We cannot expand further because of this nc1, also known as the binomial coefficient. So let us go through the binomial coefficient, whereby we can rewrite ncr into uh, n factorial, divided by n minus r factorial multiplied by r factorial at the denominator over here. So rewriting this part highlighted in yellow, nc1 can be re-expressed as this form. So nc1 is now n factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial using this formula in yellow. Likewise, for nc2, is going to be this n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial times the 2 factorial. So what about the rest of the other terms? So for all the bases of x, for all the x's here, we're going to combine. So this thing can be written down as x to the power of 5n, which is a term 1. So over here, x to the power of 5, whole thing to the power of n minus 1, shall give us x to the power of 5n minus 5, using your indices rule. And this is a divided by x to the power of 6, so that means to say, um, same base divide, power will now minus, so the power, as you can see, it becomes a minus 6. Likewise, for the third term over here, for the x's, you have x to the power of 5, whole thing to the power of n minus 2. If you multiply in the powers like this, you should get half of x to the power of 5n minus 10 using the indices rule again. So over here, you have x to the power of 6 at the bottom. If you square, you're going to have x to the power of 12 at the bottom. 
So divided by x to the power of 12 means to say same base divide power will now minus. As you can see, the power is now negative 12. Next, let's deal with all the numbers here. So we have a 2 to the power of 1, so the 2 shall remain, and 2 square shall give us a 4. So it's in black color like this. So how then do we continue from here? As we can see here, we have a factorial at the top and factorial at the bottom. So we want to use a factorial formula over here on the left. So n factorial can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial. And this can be further expanded into n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way to 1. So this is the formula for factorial. So the idea for this part is that we will need to expand the n factorial. But where exactly do we expand until? So we'll look at the next steps over here. So n factorial can be expanded into n times n minus 1 factorial. Put a factorial over here. is so that we can cancel away the n minus 1 factorial to the top and bottom. And for this, we we'll want to expand to the 1 at the bottom, which is the n minus 2 factorial. So the n factorial in rates can be expanded into n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial, such that the n minus 2 factorial for the top and bottom can therefore be cancelled out. And for the rest of the other terms, as we can see here, the first term is x to the power of 5n, no change. And for this, you have, I'm going to rewrite here the 2, 2x two to the power of 5n minus 11, if you simplify the power for the second term of your axis. Likewise, simplifying the power for um, the axis, you have x to the power of 5n minus 22. Now, think of for this constant, you have a 4 divided by 2 factorial. So 2 factorial is actually 2 times 1. So 4 divided by 2 should give us a 2, which I've written down here. Likewise, for the number in the second term, 2 divided by 1 factorial. 1 factorial is actually a 1. So 2 divided by 1 should give us a 2 like this. So after cancelling and this, we will get this answer over here. So x to the power of 5 ends remain to be the first term. So n minus 1 factorial and n minus 1 factorial is now cancelled. Now you have a 2 and x to the power of 5 n minus 11 for the second term. And for the third term, you now have a 2 n times n minus 1. Take note, your n minus 2 factorial is now cancelled times the x to the power of n minus 22 plus the triple dot behind, indicating there is more terms behind. And that's the answer for part A of this question. For the next part of this question, we are told that when the third term of the expansion is divided by the second term, you have a result of 8 divided by x to the power of 11. Now with this sentence, we can form an equation and we are supposed to reduce until we are able to show that n is equal to 9. So copying from the previous parts over here, whereby in part a, we had this answer of this. So term 1, term 2, term 3. Now in the first step of this part b, we're going to have the term 3 divided by the term 2, setting it to be equals to the result of 8 over x to the power 11. Therefore, we have an equation like this. So all the x's I've highlighted in yellow over here, because in the next step, we're going to merge all the x's over here using our indices rule. So the same base of x divides, power will now minus. So as you can see here, the power of 5n minus 11 will now be whole thing minus as I shift it to the top. And over here, you have x to the power of 11 at the bottom when you multiply over. Same base of x multiply, power will now add. So the power of 11 now is added up like this. And at the same time, the 2 and 2 can be cancelled, and the n times n minus 1 remains. This n shall be multiplied over to the other side, becomes an 8 n. So take note over here, we are not allowed to cancel the n and n at this stage. Because if we cancel away, we are cancelling away a solution. So we'll do a rejection later on in the final steps. So over here, as you can see here, for the yellow color um, axis, we're going to simplify this part. So simplifying this part, as you can see, we have a 5n minus 5n is now gone. A negative 22 minus minus becomes a positive 11. So negative 22 plus 11 plus 11. So it's 0. So you have x to the power of 0 and anything to the power of 0 is a 1. So basically, your yellow color axis in this case is now simplified into a 1. So over here, you have n times n minus 1, shifting the 8n to the left-hand side becomes a minus 8n. And for the next step, 
Factoring out a, a, a common factor of n's over here, we now have n minus 1 minus 8 and simplifying, we therefore have n times n minus 9 to be equal to 0. So n will be equal to 0 or n is equal to 9 if you have to solve this. Now as you can see here, if n is a 0, then we will not have any binomial expansion to begin with because a plus b to the power of n's. If your n is a 0, then there isn't even any binomial expansion to begin with, so we will reject at this stage. So therefore, the only answer for this part B is that n is equal to 9. So we have proven this solution that n is equal to 9 for this question. And that's the answer for part B of this question. For the final part of this question in part C, using the value of n found in part B, which is a 9, and without doing any form of expansion, show that there is no constant term in expansion. So if you are not allowed to do any expansion and we have to prove that there is no constant term, that means to say we are only left with one thing, that is to find a specific term and to show that there is no specific term that has a constant by itself. So to find a specific term, we need a general term formula for your binomial expansion, which we can describe it as a term r plus 1 to be equal to n c r a to the power n minus r b to the power of r. So this general term formula can be used to describe any term in the expansion of a plus b to the power of n. So since the r is related to your term, so for instance, if I have a term 2, r must be a 1. If I have a term 1, r must be a 0. So r must therefore be a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So r must be an integer, and in this case, a positive integer as well as a 0. So that is the condition for r. And applying this general term formula in the part C question. So ncr now is a 9cr because n is a 9. a to the power of n minus r now is a x to the power of 5 whole thing to the power of 9 minus r. b to the power of r now is a 2 over x to the power of 6 whole thing to the power of r. So in the next step, what we'll be doing is to extract out all the x's only because we are only interested with all the x's over here. So extracting out all the x's, we now have it like this. So x to the power of 5, whole thing to the power of 9 minus r. So this is x to the power of negative 6 if we use the negative indices rule. Because there's a power of r outside the bracket, we now have it as x to the power of negative 6r. Now over here, we're going to set it to be equals x to the power of 0 because according to this question, it says constant term. So constant term implies a x to the power of 0 because anything to the power of 0 is a 1. So in the next step over here, what we're going to do is we're going to combine all the x's using our indices rule. So same base of x multiply, power is now added up. So 5 times 9 is a 45, 5 times negative r is a negative 5r, plus a negative 6r like this. So base of x equals to base of x, power equals to power. So now we have a 45 minus 11r to be equal to 0. Solving for r is a 4 and 1 over 11. Now as you can see here, r is not an integer at all. In fact, r is a mixed fraction like this. Now what happens is that your r is because it's related to your term number. For instance, term 3, r must be a 2. Your r must therefore be a positive integer as well as a 0, or it can be a 0. So since r is not an integer, we have to reject this. Now since r is not an integer, we can therefore show that there is no constant term because r must be an integer such that r is in between 0 to n inclusive. And that's the answer for part c of this question. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something again. And see you in the next episode of Practical Math.